in, or, uh, in terms of program two versus program three. And like we explained earlier that when the headcount is done during their transfers and there's, uh, there are savings, then we're able to move money back to program two to make sure that program two, uh, the department functions and our schools are performing as they are supposed to. <clears throat> and in terms of the, the, the slide 15 chair, it's just the, the, the transfers because basically our independent schools will just transfer. So we don't have other items in terms of line items in terms of that. Coming to program four, which is our special schools, public special schools, uh, in terms of that, the, the department schools, the growth is 0 0.9, minus 0 0.9. And there also we try to, because we move money to the warm bodies, so as a result, other areas, which is goods and services, so will be affected. Human resource development, we had to move more of the money under teacher development. As a result, there's a slight decrease in terms of that. And also it was affected by the accruals of 2022-23. So as a result, in terms of their allocations, their accruals affected it. So that level decreases because of that. And other areas, it's uh, number four, which is conditional grants. There it's related to the learners with profound intellectual disability, which was affected by the rollover. So as a result, it drops it uh, with about 6 million. Going to slide 17, Chair. Here we're talking about the economic classification. One would see that compensation of employees as much as we try to find fully, but it drops uh, slightly and the vacancies will be affected. Our goods and services drops with 24%, but there it's, it's mostly the conditional grants that, that uh, roll over. So it's informed by that. Coming to the, our non-profit institutions, it's a normal growth uh, for subsidizing, subsidizing our special schools, the transfers to schools, which I think it's important that we, we mention that schools in terms of their funding, they are fully funded as much as the department will have problems, but right across the schools are, are fully funded. Um, going to the bottom one, the machinery and equipment, because of that huge drop of 66.67%, it's related back to, it goes back to the issue of the conditional grant, the, uh, the learners with profound intellectual uh, disability uh, chair. Yeah, the ECD, uh, yeah, we also have a deadline in terms of grade R and the story is the same, but yeah, we also had to do the correction in terms of the objectives in April so that the practitioners are appointed properly. So that one we will, we will do in terms of our uh, implementation. Um, the second one, which is grade R in ECD centers, there's a drop of 4.4%. That is as a result of accruals that were paid in the previous year. So in terms of our allocation, it's, a, it's normal growth. And the third one, the, the decrease of 1.59%, uh, it's also related to the classification that we referred to. This one links back to uh, the first one that uh, the COE of officials transferred from DST to program one. So that, that's, that's the reason the movement it had to be moved. Uh, human resource development, that is normal, it's our, it's our skills levy. And the conditional grant, uh, it goes back to the 9 million that we referred to of the rollover that we received. It was applied through DSD uh, because the function was that side, but the money came to education. So as a result, it affects the, the, the growth because it was a once-off. Um, I'm about to come to an end in terms of the budget. Uh, coming to slide 19, this is our economic classification and uh, the explanation in terms of that goes back to the previous uh, slide that the department is funding all uh, warm bodies as, as at 1 February. However, the decline is in the numbers. So the department is not in a position to fill any vacancies. So because of funding, it will be affected in terms of that. Uh, so money went to, to the vacancy program too. Uh, goods and services, like we explained, uh, it's an issue also of uh, reprioritizing uh, towards, uh, towards ECD, uh, towards uh, uh, COE. So funds were reprioritized from transfer payments, in these cases from transfer payments uh, uh, to goods and services uh, in the previous. So the decline is, is, is informed by that because during the year when we had a challenge, our transfer payments were reduced. So it was reduced to fund goods and services for other areas. So when we could hit a correction, that is why that decline is a normal decline. 
Um, coming to the other areas, the growth is okay, except when you go to the bottom, where there's a decline of 85.57%, it goes back to the issue of the rollover. Going to slide 20, um, that's our infrastructure grant the, the, where we, we, we spoke about the issue of uh, incentive and then the, 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 the growth in terms of program one is 14.1%. And uh, in terms of public window schools, there's a decline, slight decline of 4.74, and that is related to the conditional grant uh, rollover. And the rest are okay, except the last one, which is ECD, the subprogram ECD is the rollover chair. Sorry, because I keep on repeating the issue of the rollover, but they is because they feed into one another. But coming to the economic classification, which is like 21, now we're showing in terms of compensation of employees. Remember this grant, uh, this, this conditional grant chair, it comes to the portion of, of uh, COE. So there, there's an increase towards uh, our officials in that position, in that area. So that one is not a problem. Pro then goods and services, there's a drop of 35.43 and goes back to the issue of uh, rollovers a uh, uh, chair, chairperson. Uh, and uh, when you look at the outer years also, we we were affected uh, positively. We were affected positively because the grant, the rollover dropped to 126, but when you go further, it's 161. That, that informs the, the growth. And in terms of other areas, Chair, I'll go to the machinery and equipment. Uh, the year that, that we had to reprioritize our, uh, between the projects. So we moved some of the monies uh, that was in machinery in the previous financial year. Uh, I mean, other areas to machinery because of a need, but the amount is only 816,000. That is why it drops to uh, five, 500,000. There, the issues of tools of trade that had to be Procured. So that area is covered. The, 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 the reduction is, is it's normal. And like we explained at the bottom, it's a 5% reduction and it goes to their issue of rollover. Chairperson, we are coming to the last program, which is a program a examination and other and education related services, which is program seven. Um, slide 22 there. The, the CITAS 2.52, it's a COE like we explained. And uh, also when you go to professional services, the, the, the growth there is related to those social workers that have been appointed, which is 25 in total uh, to, to support the issue of the function shift as well as the area of uh, program four, which is our special schools because of uh, learners with special needs. So at least if we have those additional uh, uh, social workers, at least the, the, the department will be able to support right across. In terms of our special projects, there the growth is 2.66%, uh, 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 but in the outer years, uh, it, 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 it drops uh, drastically. Uh, the real reason there is the issue of the Presidential Youth Employment Initiative. It's why the growth then the outer yes, it drops because if, if the program comes to an end, then that, that drop, then the amounts that are there are normal amounts in terms of the allocations. Coming to so program four, which is external examination, there's a growth uh, of 1.79%, uh, but the outer yes, the, it, it, it drops also, and it's the issues of uh, COE that affects the outer year. And the conditional grant at uh, 4.74, a reduction there is also related to the rollover in terms of the conditional grant in that in that space. Um, slide twenty three. Yeah, we give the economic classification, and uh, the story is the same. Chair uh, compensation of employees grows uh, in terms of that. It's the, our social workers, goods and services. There's that growth uh, of fifteen percent. Uh, because of the, 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 the funds which were shifted from program six to program seven in line with uh, how we function, but the outer years are affected. And that is also related to the PYEI, which is the Presidential Youth Employment Initiative. Um, we'll go down to non professional institutions, just at the middle, there's a decline of 7.39%. I'm just uh, highlighting where the challenges are slightly bigger, and that also is affected by the 
Presidential Youth Employment Initiative. And the last one, it's a, a machinery and equipment. Uh, during the 2022 financial year, funds were also increased during that uh, the adjustment budget. So it, uh, it was a once off and the increase was in line with the need. So as a result, we had to correct it. However, moving to the outer year, uh, there's a challenge that uh, the money, the, the whole thing drops with uh, uh, down to 1.1 million from 4.866%. 4. Um, Chairperson, thank you very much and the honorable members. Uh, this, this is the end of the first part of our presentation. Here we just dealt with a portion of expenditure, how the budget was received and how it was allocated. If the chairperson and, and the members and MEC allows, I'll hand over to Mr. Jacobs now run with the issue of our non-financial information. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, for the opportunity to present the APP 2023-24. And let me say a very good morning to the honorable members of the Select Committee, the executive authorities who are part of the meeting, the DG, as well as my colleagues from other provinces. Uh, we're starting with program one in terms of our APP 23-24, looking at the output indicators and the targets that have been set. Output indicator 101 is looking at the number of public schools that use SASMs or any alternative electronic solution to provide data to the department. Our target for the new financial year is 935 schools, and it continues across the two outer years. Output indicator 102 is about the number of public schools that can be contacted electronically, which means via email. Our target is 800, and it moves across to the two outer years. Output indicator 103 is looking at the percentage of education expenditure going towards non-personnel items. Uh, currently, we are targeting 18%, and um, it goes down the two outer years to 13. And uh, the budget perhaps might have given a context as to why we have that uh, decrease in the outer two years. Output indicator 104 is looking at the number of smart schools provided with additional ICT devices. The target is 10 across the MTF period. 105, number of teachers provided with ICT devices. We're starting at 375 in the current financial year and we increase in the outer years by 400. Indicator 106 focuses on the number of office-based educators provided with ICT devices, in addition to those that we provide to school-based. Here the target is at 50, 2023-24, and it, it, it goes down to 25 in the outer two years. Output indicator 107 is about a monitoring report from each of the five districts on the implementation of teacher development. So here we're monitoring activities that are undertaken in districts with regard to teacher development. The target here is 20 um, across the MTF period. Output indicator 108 is on the number of schools reached through advocacy campaigns on GBV, GBVF, gender-based violence and femicide. The target is 150 across the MTF period. And output indicator 109 is on the number of district and provincial officials reached through advocacy campaigns on GBVF. 
at the level of district and provincial officials, the target is 70 and increases to 80 and 90 in the outer two years. Now, this is a, just to explain briefly, this is a new target which started last year, which came as a directive from the DPME via the Office of the Premier, the target on GBVF. So in program one, in total, we've got nine output indicators. And then I move on to program two, where the core business is located in terms of teaching and learning. Output indicator 201 is on the number of schools provided with multimedia resources. The target here is 14 across the three years. Output indicator 202 is the number of learners in public ordinary schools benefiting from the no fee schools policy. 2023-24, we're looking at 560,613 learners across the schooling system in terms of the no fee schools. And it increases slightly in the outer two years. I guess the budget would also have provided a context in terms of these figures as far as learners getting support and who are located in the no fee schools. Output 203 is on Funza Lushaka. Bursary holders placed in schools within six months upon completion of studies or upon confirmation that the BASA has completed the studies. The percentage year across the three years is 30%. Output in Kita 204 is on the percentage of learners in schools that are funded at a minimum level. Now here our target is 100% across the three years, looking at the extent to which the system is able to fund learners at a minimum level in terms of the norms and standards for funding. 205 is on the number of foundation phase teachers trained in reading methodology. Here our target is 500 across the three years. The next one is on the number of foundation phase teachers trained in numeracy content and methodology. Our target here is 500 across the three years. 207. Now this output in data is looking at participation. Sorry, number of teachers trained in mathematics content and methodology, and we've divided it into the phases that make up the schooling system is four to six teachers, seven to nine, and 10 to 12 teachers who will receive training on math content as well as the accompanying methodology. Four to six, the target is 500 across the three years, seven to nine is 300. It increases slightly in the outer two years and grade 10 to 12, 250 across the three years. The next one, 208, is looking at the number of teachers trained in language content and methodology. Again, we've divided it into the phases, four to six, seven to nine, as well as 10 to 12. Four to six is 500 across. Uh, seven to nine. In the current financial year, we started 250 and we increased slightly in the outer two years to 500, 550. 10 to 12 is 300. In the current financial year, it remains the same in the next year and in the outer year, increases to 250. Output indicator 205 is on the number of schools implementing the EGRA tool which is 150, 150, and increases in the outer year, the last year to 669. 209 is on the number of grade ones to three teachers trained on literacy content and methodology. The target is 500 across the three years. Output indicator 210 is looking now at monitoring the implementation of the IGRA tool where our target is at 150 across the three years. 11 is on the number of schools provided with grade three African languages graded readers 
and the target is 120 across the three years. Pick up the MTF period. Output indicator 212 is the number of primary schools monitored on the implementation of the national reading plan. The target is 300 across the three years. Output indicator 213, number of teachers trained on ICT curriculum integration. Our target is 1,000 across the three years. 214 is on the number of teachers trained in coding and robotics, digital technology. The target here is 220 across the three years. And output indicator 215 is on the number of teachers trained on inclusion. We start with 1.5 in the current financial year and we increase to 1,800 and to 2,000 in the outer year, the last year of the three year period. Output in Kira 216 focuses on the number of teachers trained on school safety issues. We start the financial year with 110 and we increase to 120, 150 in the two years. 217 is on the number of focus schools offering technical vocational stream. We start with 30 in the new financial year and we increase by one in the outer two years, 232 and 33 respectively. Output indicator 218 is on the number of agricultural focus schools. We start with 17 and increase by one in the outer two years, respectively to 18 and 19. Output indicator 219 is on the number of art focus schools. Here we're looking at the model art focus schools, where we're starting with one, continue with one, and increase to two in the last year of the MTF period. Output indicator 220 is on the number of hospitality focus schools, schools that will focus on hospitality in terms of the curriculum offerings. We start with two and increase to three and four respectively in the outer two years. 221 is on the number of schools offering aviation. We start with two in the first two years and in the last year of the period, we increase by one to three. Data output indicator 222 is on the number of existing primary schools where coding and robotics is piloted. 100 across the three years. Output indicator 223, number of grade 10 learners who participate in stream subjects. So these numbers are looking at physical sciences, a subject, technology specialization agricultural, engineering, graphics and design, the art subjects, as well as mathematics. So basically here we're looking at participation with a view to increase participation of learners in these subjects. So in physical science, we were starting at 19728, increased to 2500, 2600 in the last year. In technology specialization, we're starting with 3845 in the current year, and we increase 4910, 4920 in the outer two years with agricultural subjects. The participation at the current level, we're looking at 4598, and with an increase to 5300 and 5400 in the outer two years. With engineering, graphics, and design, we're starting with 5331, and we increase in the outer two years by 6200 and 6300. Art subjects starting the current financial year with participation at 647, and we increased to 1400 and 1450 in the outer two years. Mathematics, 32,656 in the current financial year in terms of the target for learner participation. And it goes slightly down to 29,800, 29,900 in the outer two years. So that was looking at participation in those subjects, the extent to which we wish to increase learner participation in those critical subjects. Output indicator two to four is looking at the number of primary schools where whole school evaluation policy is implemented through verification of SSC and SIP, which is school self-evaluation and school improvement plans. 
year the target is 45, 45, and in the last year we increased to 50. Two to five, same indicator, but this one focuses on secondary schools through the same process of implementing the old school evaluation policy. At the secondary schools level, the target is 45, first two years, and it increases to 50 in the last year. Output indicator 226 is on the number of programs implemented to enhance performance in second chance national senior certificate pass. In other words, this is an intervention that gives learners an opportunity to complete their metric. Currently, we're running a program across districts to afford them the opportunity to, to pass the national senior certificate. Two to seven is focusing on the percentage of learners with access to required mathematics textbooks in grade six, nine, and 12. So this is on provisioning textbooks in mathematics in those grades six, nine, and 12. The target for six, 60%, in 65 and 17, the outer two years, uh, basically is the same for all the grades six, nine, and 12, the targets, as far as provisioning of mathematics textbooks in those grades. Output indicator 22A is on the percentage of learners with access to required IFAL textbooks in grades six, nine, and 12, basically the same, but this one focuses on English as a first additional language, IFAL. Now the targets are basically the same as above with regard to mathematics in six, nine, and 12. And that was the end of program two, which is the longest program with 228, the last indicator. So basically we have 28 in program. Like I said at the beginning, it is the longest program which focuses more on teaching and learning as far as education provision is concerned in the province. Now I move on to program three. Now this program uh, is very short. We've got output indicator 201, which looks at the percentage of registered independent schools receiving subsidies. So the program focuses on independent school subsidies. The target on 301 is 67, increases to 73 and 76, respectively, in the outer two years. 302 is on the number of learners subsidized at registered independent schools. With the current financial year, we're starting at 15143 and we increase to 15,900 in the next year and 16,695 in the outside year, the last year of the MTF period. Output in here 303 looks at the percentage of registered independent schools that are monitored throughout the financial year. We start with a target of 70, we increase to 80 and 84 in the outer two years respectively. That was program three, very short, with three output indicators. Program four is on special schools. The first output indicator is on the number of learners in public special schools. We start with 6753 in the current financial year and increase to 714 in the outer two years, respectively. 402 is on the number of therapists or specialist staff in public special schools. 104 in the current financial year, we increased to 110 and 115 respectively in the outer two years. Output in Gita 403 is on the number of schools of skills implementing the technical occupational stream. The target for the current financial year lying ahead is a eight to increase to nine and 10, respectively in the outer two years. Output indicator 404 is a number of special schools provided with additional assistive devices. Here the target is eight schools across the MTF period. That was program four, also very short with only four output indicators. Now we move to program five, which focuses on ECD, early childhood development. Output indicator 501 is on the number of public schools that offer grade R. We start with 615 
in the financial year lying ahead, and that is the same for the outer two years. FO2 is on the number of learners in grade R. 37,114 in the financial year lying ahead, and it increases to 38,114 and 39,114 respectively in the outer two years. 503 is on the number of registered ECD centers. We start the financial year with 1409, increases to 1450 and 1500 in the outer two years, respectively. And 504 is on the number of children accessing registered ECD programs. We start with 8110 in the, in the current financial year and the increase goes to 82,000 in the next year and 82,500 in the last year of the NTF period. 504 is on the number of grade R practitioner educators trained on CAPS. 600 is our start, the following year still 600, it increases to 50 in the outer year. Now this is on the curriculum and assessment policy statement for grade R. 506 is on the number of pre-grade R practitioners trained on the national curriculum framework, NCF. The target is 1,000 across the three-year period. That was the end of program five on ECD. Now we'll move on to program six, which focuses on infrastructure development. Output indicator 601 focuses on the number of public schools provided with water infrastructure. Target in the current financial year is 30, and then it goes down to 11 and 10, respectively, in the outer two years. Second output indicator and the infrastructure is focusing on electricity infrastructure. In terms of the number of public schools provided with electricity infrastructure, is 14, 15, 15 across the three years. The third one is on the number of public schools supplied with sanitation facilities. The target is seven, increases to nine the next year and goes down to eight the last year of the period. Output indicator 604 is on the number of schools provided with new or additional boarding facilities. The target in the financial year lying ahead is one, increases to three in the next year and goes back to one in the last year. 605 is on the number of schools where scheduled maintenance projects are completed. We start with 11 in the financial year lying ahead, it increases to 25 in the next year, following year, and in the last year, the target is at 23 in terms of scheduled maintenance projects in schools. 606, number of security fences constructed. We start the new financial year with 20 schools, 20, sorry, 20 security fences, and then we go down to 10. And in the outer financial year, the last year, we increase to 16. That was program six on infrastructure. We move to the last program, which is examinations and education related services. Mostly our focus is on our targets with regard to the national senior certificate, looking at different things in terms of what we want to achieve as a system. 701 is on the overall outcome of the NCS, NSC, where we're looking at the percentage of learners who pass the NSC. Our target for the new financial year is 85%, we increased to 86, and in the last year of the MTF, we increased it to 87%. That is overall pass rate. Output indicator 702 is looking at the bachelor pass in terms of the percentage of learners who achieve a pass in the NSC at the level of what we call the bachelor. We start the new financial year with a 40%. We increase to 41 and 42 in the outer two years respectively. 703 is looking at the percentage of grade 12 learners achieving a 60% and above in mathematics. So that is a 60% pass and above. We're starting with 14, looking ahead at the new financial year. 
In other words, at the end of the 2023 NSC examinations, and we increased to 15 and 16 respectively in the outer two years. Output indicator 704, similar with 703. This one is looking at physical science and the one above looking at mathematics. Here, the target is 17, increases to 18 and 19 respectively in the outer two years. 705 is looking at the number of secondary schools with a pass rate in the NEC of 60% and above. Number of secondary schools will achieve 60 and above. In terms of the pass rate, we're starting with 320 in the current financial year, and we maintain it at 320 across the MTF period. Output indicator 706 is looking at the percentage of grade 12 learners who pass engineering graphic design, EGD. Targets are 87, increased to 88 in the following year, and in the last year of the MTF increases to 89% in terms of achievement in the subject called engineering graphic design. 707 is looking at the percentage of grade 12 learners who pass art subjects. We're starting the financial year with 93%, increase to 94 and 95 respectively in the outer two years. 708 is looking at the percentage of grade 12 learners passing technical subjects. Here we exclude technical maths and technical science, where our target is looking at 99.1% across the three years of the MTF. Output indicator 709, we're looking at percentage of grade 12 learners passing technical maths. So as you can see, technical maths is a standalone, it's not part of the technical subjects target. Here we're looking at 85% across the three years. Output indicator 710. Here we're looking now at learner performance internally at schools, where we're saying, what is the number of public primary schools where at least 60% of grade six learners perform at level four and above in English first additional language and mathematics. So now here we're looking at the internal examinations at grade six level. The target here is 350 starting the new financial year and we move it to 380 and 400 respectively in the outer two years. That was the last program, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Thanks for your for, for the for the presentation. Um, honourable members, um, I want to make a suggestion that maybe what we should have been talking to some few people on the side that maybe we should give Houteng a chance to make their presentation, and then we don't engage with their presentation. We can engage with it uh, in writing and or invite them to the meeting uh, when the department comes to make their APP. Uh, if, if that is okay with the members, then we'll give uh, the uh, ME Swap Houghton to open this presentation, but please next time make sure that we get information on time so that we can engage with the presentations that you are giving us. It's it's not fair for us to receive a document uh, late, late during the day, and then we, we need to engage with it the following day in the morning. It's definitely unfair. Um, but let me, without much ado, give uh, the Houghton uh, PD to give the their report. The presentation, I mean. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, firstly, let me apologize um, uh, for, for, for the late submission. 
uh, there were administrative challenges, but they, they are resolved. Uh, what I can assure you is that uh, they will not happen again. Uh, Chair, I'll need a second to, because I'm using my phone. I, I subsequently used my phone, so I'm trying to use my laptop to connect for a second, to connect to the meeting uh, so that we can. Uh, but in the team, I had, uh, I have, uh, let me check here, if they're still here, because immediately when, when the chair dismissed the counting, uh, we then, I know that some of uh, the leadership uh, of the department, the senior management blocked off. Uh, but I do have uh, the acting HOD, Mr. Rufus Mutlana. So they walked out of the meeting? No, no, no. They, it, I, no, they're here. They're here. Okay. I'm, I'm looking. All right. No, they're here. <laughs> they're here. No. Apology. Uh, and then we have uh, the DDG, uh, Albert Cheney, uh, who's uh, supposed to take us through the presentation. So I will not want to waste any more time. I'll just hand over to the acting HOD chair to take us through uh, to uh, uh, through our presentation. And then when post the presentation, then I can come in to add, uh, add some remarks so that it also give me time to connect on the laptop so that you can see that I'm here, uh, uh, chair. Thank you, Chair. Uh, to the Rufus. There's load shading on our right here. Yeah. There's no electricity. So we'll, I'll switch my video off. I, I see that Rufus says unmuted. I'm sure he's struggling with network. Uh, Rufus Mutlan. Rufus? Can you hear me, Chairperson? Yes, we can see you and we can hear you now. Oh, you can hear me now. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I was saying thank you, MEC, and thank you, Chairperson, for the opportunity and also to echo the apology um, um, which has been tabled by the uh, MEC. Uh, it's unfortunate and indeed we will make sure that this does not happen again, as MEC has indicated. Uh, our presentation uh, was sent last night, uh, yesterday, as uh, the chairperson indicated, uh, and is comprehensive in terms of the, the performance plan. Uh, Mr. Albert Chen, our DDG for planning, will be leading this particular presentation. And I'm also wanting to uh, table the apology from our HOD, who's on sick leave uh, since Monday. Therefore, he's not able to join this particular meeting. Uh, but our presentation will be led by Mr. Albert Cheney. Mr. Cheney? Uh, Mr. Cheney, you can join now. I know we also have uh, in attendance our chief director of Cheney's unit. Uh, maybe uh, 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 Helen, if you can uh, load the presentation and then Albert will, will run through it. Ms. Mukhosi? Ms. Mukhosi, can you hear me? I hear you, Chairperson. I can hear you. Um, if you yeah. could load the presentation. Okay. Mm. I'm trying to load, Chairperson. Sure. 
Albert, Albert, can you load from your side? Albert uh, is also live. Mr. Cheney? Uh, can I maybe flight the presentation on my side? Yes, maybe that, that will help. Yes, that will help. Thank you. You have the presentation, uh, Noltando. So just at least help them to see if they... Is it showing? Not yet. Albert, yeah, can I can, this, the presentation is on the screen, I can see. Yeah? No, not as yet. It's shared on my side, huh? I can't you load to because open the is, uh, trying to yeah. load. Let me try again. I know that uh, Mr. Cheney's one is showing now. Can you put it on the slideshow? Um, it is a slideshow. Yeah. Is it showing? You can I start? Yes. Okay.
Yeah, it's showing now. Uh, Albert, you can proceed. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members, MEC. Good morning. Uh, and colleagues. Uh, apologies for that. Um, if I can just then try to save some time and go into the presentation. The, the five-year plan and together with the APP are based on all the national planning and provincial planning documents. Uh, most importantly, uh, in the Gauteng context is a provincial uh, strategy called Growing Gauteng Together 2030. Uh, read together with the education action plan towards 2020, uh, 2030. We've also taken into consideration both the SONA and the SOPA for 2023 uh, in, in ensuring that we, we do achieve the targets that have been set. Uh, our overall five-year plan has got five broad strategies. Uh, the first focus is on ECD. Uh, both the grade R and the non-grade R components that were transferred from the Department of Social Development, uh, improving the quality of education across all grades and schools, uh, dealing with school safety, social cohesion, and the issue of nonviolence in schools. Uh, strategy four deals with the education landscape <clears throat> and ensuring that there is greater relevance uh, and access to, to quality education. And then strategy five is a province-specific uh, strategy which deals with the transition of youth from school to post-schooling opportunity. And it also focuses on uh, unemployed youth in the province of Kauteng. Just in short, the, the enrollment trends, Kauteng has uh, been growing consistently uh, since 1995 when we started collecting the data. Uh, annually, we are now growing at approximately one to one and a half percent. In previous years, it was around two percent. Uh, in total, we, we do see a net increase of around 60,000 learners. Uh, and this is highly impacted by, by the in-migration from other provinces and foreign countries. Uh, um, in total, we have a inflow of 117,000 learners. Uh, from, from different provinces. Uh, I think the most dominant of that is currently Limpopo, followed by KwaZulu-Natal. Uh, and then obviously uh, learners coming from foreign countries for the first time uh, into the schooling system is at 25,000. Uh, obviously there is also some learners that migrate back to other provinces um, from Gauteng. And so the net effect is, is around uh, 60,000 uh, growth in the system. Um, I think we've seen a, a steady growth in both LSEN and, and in grade R. I think in grade R, we, we're now having to, to account for the private grade R provision uh, to, to bring the numbers closer to, to the universalization target. Uh, and in terms of LSEN, uh, we have increased the, the number of schools uh, for specialized and special education. Uh, and I think we've seen a, a good in that regard. Uh, overall, we've got 3,232 institutions of which 2,063 are public ordinary schools, 149 public special schools. Uh, we've got 253 independent subsidized schools and we've got 767 independent non-subsidized schools. Uh, in total, we're sitting with 2.733 million learners, which 2.3 million are in public schools, uh, and in total, 360 or 370,000 uh, is sitting in independent schools. The overall uh, phases, there's 105% of learners are in grade R, 25% in the foundation phase, 25% in the in intermediate phase, senior phase is 24%, in the FED band, it's 21. Uh, and we know that as we get closer to matric, we, we, we tend to see learners exiting, uh, in some instances, even dropping out. Uh, the number of educators we've got in the system in total is 103,000 uh, educators, uh, of which uh, we find that 70,000 is employed by the state uh, in public schools. Um, the SGB paid is sitting at almost 8,000, 
and in total is 25,900 in independent schools. The five-year plan and elevated priorities to end of term, uh, just to put it into context, the, the Executive Council uh, um, last year undertook a review and identified uh, what would be the key priorities within the five-year plan to end of term. Um, and as indicated in, in the five priority areas that we have, uh, complete grade R and develop a new approach and system for pre-grade R would be your ECD priorities. Uh, in terms of priority two, quality education is about strengthening foundations across the entire GT uh, band. Uh, we're calling this reclaiming the crown because I think we want to be competitive uh, and ensure that more and more learners pass and we want to strive to become number one again. Um, and then we want to expand and enhance schools of specialization, which is a form of focused education uh, and technical high schools. And we want to continue participating in provincial, national, regional, and international learn assessments as a way of benchmarking, but also pacing the system towards higher levels of improvement. In priority three, which is changing the education landscape, we want to deal with the rationalization of undersubscribed schools. Uh, this is where learner numbers have dwindled. Uh, in some instances, it's due to a reduction in the demand in those specific areas. In some areas, it's related to uh, underperforming school management. And in those cases, we will reconstitute the school uh, and look at ways of improving access and ensure that the school does become viable. We are also using a approach towards twinning and resource optimization, uh, which is about getting good schools to work with under-resourced schools with a view to, to ensuring that the schools become comparable uh, in the learner experience and performance. Uh, and then we want to focus on new to the national norms and standards. And then we want to focus on poorly managed schools as, as a priority because poorly managed schools uh, also tend to be mainly in, in, in poor communities. Uh, and we are targeting an approach to dealing with these specific uh, schools uh, in, in, in a very targeted way. As part of the, the approach to dealing with poorly managed schools, we're looking at, at, at possibly conceptualizing what we're calling multi-campus schools. Uh, these are schools that, that would have a single uh, uh, governance and management uh, structure, uh, and, and then to look at how do we develop the right uh, uh, management capacity to ensure that all schools in, in this multi-campus approach perform in a comparable level. Uh, and then we're looking at mega schools and how then we've got a large number of schools that are now exceeding two and a half thousand learners. Uh, we even have a primary school with 3000 learners. Uh, these we're calling mega schools and we're now looking at how do we change uh, the, 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 the composition of the management uh, as well as how do we deal with the timetabling and programmatic aspects of these schools to improve. Uh, controls to ensure that there is low disruptions uh, and high participation in the program. Uh, and in program four, which deals with uh, social cohesion, we're focusing on the issue of school sports uh, and dealing with the issue of social cohesion, especially with the issue of racism uh, that seems to, to, to uh, feature in some schools on an ongoing basis. Uh, we want to improve competitive sport, uh, and then we want to deal with school health, anti-drugs programs, uh, in, in high-risk communities uh, and to continue with the girl child support and guidance programs. Uh, the safety patrollers is, is part of the uh, a program that we're running with the Department of Community Safety. We've hired uh, uh, over 5,000 members of the community in and around schools. Uh, and, and we are we are basically focusing on trying to build up at least some kind of presence to, to at least assist the school in access control, uh, as well as other safety uh, related matters. This program we've been running for a few years, we've reintroduced it uh, with the Department of Community Safety 
the Community Policing Forum and the South African Police Services. Uh, and, and so we, we are trying to increase the presence of, of some kind of safety element uh, in, in mainly high-risk and township schools. Uh, and then to provide psychosocial support on an ongoing basis to, to schools where there is uh, levels of violence and bullying and so on. Uh, and then to continue with our pro poor interventions uh, across the board. In priority five, which is uh, to deal with Gauteng youth through transitions, uh, the one flagship project of, of this program is to award uh, the top three learners from NOFI schools, which are mainly township schools, a guaranteed bursary to go to any institution to study any, any uh, field. Uh, this this uh, is, is uh, a positive program in that uh, the targeting is based on the school and is not based on the ranking uh, and merit order that may emerge from the metric exam. So schools, uh, three learners in schools are guaranteed bursaries. And then we're looking at workplace and experiential learning to increase youth employability. This is to assist uh, TVET students from finding uh, work placement to complete their certification, but also to help graduates to at least get some kind of, of learnership uh, that they can then beef up their CVs to become employable. We are also providing career counseling and guidance. Uh, to, to grade eight and grade nine learners across the province. Uh, and this is to assist them in choosing the right subjects in grade 10. And we, we then build, de dealing with developing a skills program required by the four, a, five, four IR programs uh, and the transformation. And this is basically to look at how do we take all the unemployed youth in the program and channel them into available programs or design programs to assist them uh, to, to, to become employable. Uh, and I think in this, this regard, we've put into place a number of, of interventions uh, and they are aligned to uh, the skills needs of the labor markets uh, based on, on the regional uh, economies within the province of Gauteng. Chair, within that, that five year uh, uh, program, we, we've elevated uh, for the period ending uh, at the end of the um, current financial year is to focus on the grade 12 results uh, by increasing the pass rate and the quality of passes, uh, to focus on this uh, uh, on ECD, ICT rollout in township schools, investing in skills for the future, school safety, infrastructure delivery, uh, investing in school infrastructure in townships uh, across the board. <clears throat> and then obviously uh, looking at the integration and rehabilitation of learners into welfare and wellness programs uh, and, and the other way around those out of those programs to integrate them back into schools and then youth development as a focus. Uh, so those, those priorities uh, focus mainly on, uh, as I indicated, improving grade 12, uh, and then obviously you have to deal with more investing in school infrastructure uh, and to, to ensure that we find the new schools program to the admissions program. Uh, so that we, we can minimize the impact of overcrowding uh, in school. And then uh, we, will, we will continue with the complete the rollout of the schools of specialization. Our target was 35. We will complete the 35 by the end of the, the term. Uh, and then We will
uh, children in conflict to the law that wants to Yeah, your network is really, your network is very, very poor. Can somebody from the department take over from there? Uh, thank, thank you, Chair. Let, 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 let me just check if, uh, uh, is the DDG uh, is still here to conclude the presentation? <laughs> Let me see, but the presentation has vanished from the screen. I can't load from my side. Uh, I don't know whether Helen can try to load again from, from that side. Or the secretariat, if uh, you can help us to, to load. Noltan, um, Maskaga can maybe help you with it. Uh... Is the presentation showing? Maybe yeah, we could give them a um, uh, right to 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 to. to. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I think the that so that they can manipulate the slides. Can we go to slide twenty? Uh, slide forty, I think the one dealing with uh, elevated uh, priorities. I think that's where he got cut. Next one. Yeah, I think I think uh, this is where he, he got cut. Uh, I think we, we can stop here. Yeah, this this way, uh, um, Mr. Chin got got cut, uh, where we're dealing with our elevated priorities. And in this particular slide, can you hear me, uh, members, honorable members? Am I audible? Yeah, you yes. have. You are. You are indeed. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, on this particular priority, uh, we, we are focusing on our grade 12 performance, given that uh, the public uh, pe 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 wants to me normally measure the department on the uh, performance we are, we are achieving in this particular area of work. And uh, we, 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 under the, the focus of grade 12, we've got the declaration of underperforming schools and in this particular case, we, we want to focus on them to ensure that there's a rapid assessment and ensure that they, they improve in terms of uh, their performance. HOD on regular basis uh, every year has got accountability sessions with the underperforming school principals. And over and above that, we, we've got what we call secondary school intervention program, which is called SIP from grade 10 to 12. You know that in the past, we used to focus only on grade 12, but now we, we are taking them from uh, grade uh, pe pe 10. Uh, and over and above that, we are also have introduced in the department over the, the last year, uh, a broadcasting facility where um, learners could uh, listen to broadcasting from the best teachers available to ensure that 
and we share capacity within the, the, the province. There are also interventions in all other grades, which are run or uh, uh, operated from districts. And there's also monitoring of the curriculum and assessment standards uh, from district level. And uh, there's also access to e-content uh, for uh, most of our schools. Next slide. We, 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 we are quite keen and focused on modernization and investing uh, in school infrastructure. On ICT matters, we, 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 over the, the last term, we've been on a mission to convert uh, most of our uh, classrooms, especially at high school level, uh, to ICT classrooms. And so far, we have installed 2,400 smart boards for great uh, tents. Uh, and we, 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 we we, we are um, continuing with our innovation on online admissions for 2024. Uh, we are currently preparing and updating the system so that we can launch it for the 2024 uh, uh, admission uh, cycle. And on uh, school infrastructure, this is one of our critical challenges in the province, uh, in, in the department. Uh, and we, 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 because of migration, as we indicated in the last slides, and a lot of uh, learners were getting for, for grade one and grade eight. Therefore, we, we had to think out of the box and get some uh, inno innovative ways of um, dealing with this infrastructure. We've introduced self-built uh, classrooms where we transfer funds to schools to build for themselves. And then we, we are also working collaboratively with infrastructure agencies to accelerate delivery of our new schools infrastructure uh, in, in, in this particular province. Next slide. Again, on the issue of infrastructure challenges, uh, uh, as we speak, we, we are having 26 schools which are built from asbestos and they are in, we, we regard that as inappropriate schools given the fact that the material is unacceptable. We've got 79 whole mobile schools. That is 79 uh, schools where uh, we were operating from mobile classrooms. And we've got 1,228 schools with maintenance related challenges. These are the schools which were built a long time ago and they need maintenance. Otherwise, uh, we'll be facing situations like uh, Driuk as we had uh, about two years ago. And then 723 of the 2,200 schools have classroom shortages, which is uh, pe 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 depicts the, the bigger challenge of our schooling infrastructure in the province. And we are, we, are, we are arguing that if the total number of the classroom shortages were enough to constitute a, 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 a full school, uh, there are currently existing a shortage of about 152 new schools, uh, 85 primary schools, and 67 uh, secondary schools. Therefore, if we're to be on par with the demand for schooling in this particular province, we need to build a total of <laughs> schools. The number uh, above also indicates the shortages which at existing schools and exclude schools that are required in the new residential developments. You know that in Houten there are resident developments which are cropping up all over, but the, most of those regional development did not make provision for uh, facilities like schools, uh, which uh, uh, needs to absorb learners from, uh, from these particular uh, areas. Next slide. We, we uh, did it change spoke about schools of specialization. Uh, and in this particular slide, we are noting that we have already launched any one of these uh, type of schools and plans uh, to the end of term is to have two schools of specialization to be launched during this first quarter of this financial year and 12 to be launched in the next academic year uh, in this particular province. And our focus in terms of special, special areas is engineering, math, science, and ICT, and sports. Next slide. On the health and wellness program, uh, uh, which we, uh, we need across our sector, this has also been an elevated priority from our uh, provincial leadership. Uh, first of all, we, we are indicating that as far as personnel related methods are concerned, employee counseling services uh, 
in the department, we're offering it 24 seven uh, and uh, 365 uh, days per year. We've also accelerated marketing in this particular area. We are also, uh, which we have noted even in, uh, in our staff members, especially educators, there's a, a high level of mental uh, challenges uh, in the sector. And we have uh, introduced workshops to, attend, to deal with uh, this particular challenge. And even our uh, employee health programs include this particular progress as a, as, as, as a focus area. On financial and literacy sessions, we are also uh, partnering with uh, various uh, private sector organizations to ensure that they uh, work with us in informing our staff members on financial wellness uh, and sports and recreational services. Uh, we are uh, introducing them at a, a staff level, but we are also making it a priority at school level to ensure that uh, we've got a, a, a fit young uh, learners in our schools. Next slide. On the next, next slide, we are uh, 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 giving detail on matters relating to health and wellness, including matters, uh, uh, particular specifics in terms of school sports, where we are focusing on all array of soccer activities in, in our schools, like soccer, rugby, uh, cricket, netball, and athletics. And you'll know that in our multiplication program at primary schools, uh, we are also uh, trying to introduce other sports like swimming, et cetera. Next slide. Next slide is about youth development. If you can move to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, on, on youth development, we are, we are consolidating youth development activities uh, for greater impact and reach in our province. And as we speak, we are uh, uh, now joined hands with the uh, Office of the Premier where the popular TEP 1 million program has now uh, 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 been moved into the department to ensure that there's an integrated approach to youth development uh, within the province. And in so doing, you, 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 uh, 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 the honorable members will know that in our province and our department, we are privileged to have a dedicated academy, GSRA, Houghton City Region Academy, which is mandated to deal with a, a skill development for youth. Uh, and we are, we, are, we are repositioning this particular agency to ensure that it can fully deliver on its mandate as per the master skills plan uh, for the housing uh, or growing housing together 2030 and uh, teach uh, township, uh, informal settlement and hostels as adopted by the current uh, exco. Uh, and uh, Didi Cheney spoke about awarding of bursaries, which we are still committed to it. The only improvement and expansion in this particular area is the fact that in the past, we used to cap the uh, learners to about 60,000 per annum. Now we are paying a, all a, 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 a fees for the, these learners. We're also accommodating postgraduate students uh, being funded from the GSRA. Next slide. I spoke about repositioning TEP 1 million and the fact that we are uh, incorporating it within the department so that uh, youth programs are being uh, delivered from one uh, platform. Uh, and uh, in the uh, bottom part of that particular uh, slide, we're dealing with uh, the new approach, which talks about self-directed learning, online facilities, tutor supported uh, sessions, et cetera, including artisan uh, development. Uh, and we, 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 we are also not ignoring uh, Tibet colleges. We are supporting 500 young people who are in Tibet colleges through funding and, and, and additional uh, programs in, in that regard. Next slide. In this particular slide, we are, we are trying to plot our focus on Tish Township, informal settlement and hostels. And we, 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 in, in the townships, we, we are targeting the, the, the programs outlined in the left-hand periphery of that particular slide from scholar transport, nutrition, uh, right up to SIP programs uh, without reading all of them. And on the right part of the uh, slide, we are looking at programs in informal settlements, uh, in particular, scholar transport, nutrition, and uniforms, because those are the 
uh, clear, clearly identified challenges in, 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 in those uh, TISH uh, areas. Next slide. Uh, this is the budget overview of the department. I don't know whether Albert is back now because uh, he needs to, he can deal with this one uh, uh, going on. Albert? Yes, I'm back. Thank you very much. And so apologies. You can the budget overview uh, until the end. Sure. Uh, the, the overall budget has uh, increased. Um, The overall budget has increased um, by 5% uh, overall. Uh, and I think if we look at the budget growth over the, the period MTF is that it is growing, uh, but it is growing minimally in the outer years. Uh, the main increase in 23, 24 and 22, 23 was the transfer of the budget for ECD uh, and so you would see that there is very little space uh, in the budget for to accommodate the, the improvements in conditions of service. Uh, and that will have to come in as an adjustment budget uh, at some point. Uh, it is becoming more and more difficult to, to, to sustain the programs. Uh, we've had to go into cost containment uh, um, in, in the last three years. We are now also starting to rationalize certain programs. Uh, in order to, to protect uh, the core investments uh, that are required to ensure quality learning. Overall, we are spending 8.1% uh, of our budget on administration, 70% uh, on public ordinary schools, one6 on subsidizing independent schools, 8.3% on special ed, 3.7% on ECD, 3.9% on infrastructure development, uh, and then 4.2% on, on examinations and related services. In this instance, uh, the related services relates to youth development. The overall uh, spending in terms of economic classification, 73% uh, of the budget is spent on salaries, 2.9% uh, on capital, 12.4% uh, is transfer payments. These are subsidies to institutions. Uh, and then 12.1% is spent on goods and services that includes uh, nutrition, uh, scholar transport, LTSM and related uh, inputs. I think if we look at the uh, overall priorities, they've been well structured, so I will not go into too much of them per program, uh, but to possibly just go into the resource allocation, uh, just to in indicate that um, the, the overall spending in administration, uh, Chair, I'm not too sure we still are, but I think we still, the province that spends the least on administration at 8.1%, uh, the majority of the spending goes on corporate services in, in offices uh, and education management, which relates to uh, districts uh, and district support. Uh, and then obviously uh, we're spending about 26 million uh, on, on EMIS and in, uh, IT infrastructure related. In total, the majority in program one is allocated to, to personnel. Uh, and at, at 4 billion. Um, and then obviously uh, the balance uh, relates to uh, payments for capital assets, which are mainly uh, related to offices, uh, rental and leases. The targets in this regard, I think we, we have uh, uh, maybe to indicate to, to the committee uh, as, as a whole, uh, we have adopted the, the strategic objectives that were proposed for the sector uh, nationally. Uh, even though there was no uh, concurrence in this regard, we, we have adopted it. And then obviously we've added on uh, some provincial indicators. So the nomenclature in the table is SOI uh, is the nationally agreed upon ones and POI is the provincial ones. Uh, 
Uh, and the targets that we've set uh, for, for your schools using uh, an electronic administration system is all schools. Uh, and then the same thing being connect, contacted uh, via email. All schools have a public email address uh, set up by the department. Uh, and then the percentage of expenditure towards non-personnel items, uh, we're projecting that we will keep it at around 27, uh, but we were hoping to go towards 25% uh, over the next two years. Uh, I think we still have a, a skewed uh, a senior uh, management service in, in education. Uh, we still have a, the majority of males holding director positions and above. Uh, and our target is to, to, to increase uh, the participation of women at that level. Uh, and I think the, the, the targets uh, are going to be met or exceeded based on the current uh, recruitment strategy that, that's been adopted in the department. I think with the uh, national percentage of people with disability employed in the department, uh, which is uh, 3%, I think we, we are currently achieving and exceeding that, uh, and we're hoping to, to sustain that over the period uh, of the MTF. In program two, I'm not going to go into this. I think we've dealt with it in the opening slides. Um, the, <clears throat> once again, the, the SOIs that we've adopted is the ones we agreed to nationally. Um, I think we are looking at the number of schools provided with multimedia resources. Uh, we had a, a target of 260 schools that would be supported uh, with, with e-material. Uh, this would be electronic material and digital material that we've developed or procured for schools. Uh, and this includes material that would be loaded on the electronic boards and laptops of teachers. Uh, so we are currently uh, targeting 260 schools uh, with the refresh uh, and additional materials to be provided. The number of learners in no-fee schools uh, is going to increase as a result of increased enrollment. Uh, we are sitting with the situation where uh, there is a bit of a funding challenge uh, to increase in the number of schools that want to apply uh, to become no fee, uh, and we are trying to deal with that as effectively as we can. Uh, we are now sitting at almost 63% uh, of learners uh, in, in Gauteng now uh, receiving education in no fee schools. Uh, with the Funza Lushaka bursary holders, uh, we've set a target of 50%, which is what we've agreed to nationally. Uh, this simply means that we will try to place uh, new graduates from the Funza Lushaka uh, bursary scheme within, within a, a six-month period, uh, and hopefully we would be in a position uh, to, to then absorb the balance uh, over the year. The number of learners uh, that are funded at a minimum level, it's 100% counting. We are fully compliant. Uh, with the national norms and standards and the, the, um, the, 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 the adequacy amounts that have been stipulated by the minister. Uh, and so in that case, we don't have any problem. Uh, in the case of the number of teachers uh, to be trained in the foundation phase in literacy and numeracy, these are new indicators. We, we've set targets of two and a half to 3,000 3, uh, teachers uh, in order to achieve uh, that, that first level uh, of the pro program. Um, in, in respect of the number of teachers trained in mathematics and language content, these are the non-foundation phase. Uh, we're looking at uh, 1,500 per, per focus area. And then the number of residential camps, which is a provincial uh, uh, target. These, these are camps that we hold during the school holidays for matriculants. Uh, and it is essentially to help them uh, catch up with, with, with uh, backlogs in learning, uh, but also to teach them study skills to get them ready for <coughs> the metric exam. And, and I think it's been a big contributor. 
Uh, in total, we, we're targeting approximately 17,000 uh, um, um, learners that are high risk. Uh, and then obviously we will target more learners in terms of other SIP interventions uh, that are currently in place. In terms of school nutrition, we're sitting at 1,640,000. Uh, uh, and I think we, we will increase that number to 1,651. Uh, this is simply in line with the conditional grant, but to indicate that we do get a provincial allocation for learners in quintile four and five. Uh, and this figure includes the learners in quintile four and five uh, that, that are indigent and that need support. Uh, in the next one is the number of learners being transported. Um, chair, the target is increased to 210,000. Uh, the backlog in, in school infrastructure uh, is impacting on, on our ability to ensure a reduction in the number of learners being transported, but we are tracking it and hopefully <coughs> as new classrooms are delivered, we'll be able to see a decrease in these numbers over time. And the number of schools declared as no fee is uh, sitting at 1,408. Uh, and this includes those 140 odd schools that applied to be no fee uh, in quintile four and quintile five. In program three, um, the, the subsidies uh, is only going to approximately 25% of learners in, in the province. Uh, all the other schools are not applying for subsidies. Uh, so as a result of that, we are sitting at 1.3 billion. Um, I think we are going to uh, meet the target. We don't think we'll overspend or underspend in this regard, uh, but we usually tend to spend a little less due to schools that don't qualify uh, when they don't meet the, the funding criteria. <clears throat> and sometimes they do get funded later in the year when they do meet the, the requirements. Um, I think here we're sitting at around target of 23% that will be in subsidized schools. Uh, and this would be in total 136,000 learners. In program four, um, we are having a budget of 5.2 uh, billion. Uh, the compensation portion is, is around 4 billion. Uh, and then transfer payments is 1 billion. These, these are the subsidy portions. Um, I think there's an increase in this by about 400,000 uh, from the main appropriation last year, uh, mainly to accommodate salaries. And, and uh, I think to a large extent, uh, we, we are not going to overspend in this program, but we can indicate that as we increase uh, services in this regard, we are going to have a challenge uh, in, in terms of improving the service levels uh, in a lot of schools. There are three indicators in this regard. Um, the number of learners in public special schools, uh, we're hoping there'd be an increase in this year. I think we are seeing an increase in the preliminary data that we've seen. Uh, there's a increase in the number of therapists, uh, but I think to, to be uh, honest in this regard, uh, due to the salary scales of, of therapists and specialist staff in, in the Elson area, such as occupational therapists and psychologists, uh, government salaries uh, in the education sector are not competitive. Uh, as a result, it, it takes us a lot of time to find uh, a, 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 a person to fill the vacancy in these, in these schools, uh, and we are trying to work uh, with, with universities to find ways of uh, helping us close those gaps. Uh, the number of uh, educators employed in, this, in the system has increased slightly, uh, and that's uh, as a result of also constrained budgets in the personnel uh, budget overall. In terms of uh, ECD, uh, just to go on to... The, the budget area, so we are spending 1.6 billion on, on grade R in public schools, um, 23 million on grade R in ECD centers, 
Um, and then pre-grade R in ECD centers is 447 million. And then obviously we're dealing with human resource development at 20 uh, million. Uh, and then there's a conditional grant that also supports uh, the compliance and, and, and uh, uh, services in, in the pre-grade R, uh, which is in ECD centers uh, operating in the province. A large portion of this is in uh, salaries, and maybe I need to link this to the HRD strategy. Uh, Chair, we've been able to take two and a half thousand grade R practitioners over the last four years uh, from at least a metric to now being fully qualified uh, as educators. We've given them bursaries uh, on a program run by the department uh, and we've upgraded their, their qualifications to a full teaching qualification. Uh, and we've also adjusted their salaries accordingly uh, in line with that. And you will see that there's an increase uh, in the amount set aside for the compensation of employees. And that is to now recognize them uh, as qualified teachers uh, with, with a teaching degree. Um, I think if you look at the access to uh, grade R, um, it's 1,407 schools as a target. Uh, these are the total number of primary schools that are in scope. Um, the number of learners enrolled in grade R uh, this excludes the learners in community-based sites, uh, as well as learners in, in private uh, sites, ECD sites. And this is only in public schools, and that is sitting at 130,000. Um, and then we will revise this indicator moving forward to incorporate uh, the centers that have been transferred to education. Uh, and we will then reposition re the targeting uh, to include uh, the, the, the grade R learners in, in private and community-based sites. The percentage of grade one learners that receive formal grade R education, uh, we've set a target of 74%. Our achievement level uh, in, in the current last financial year was 73.4%. Uh, we're hoping to increase this. Um, and I think to a large extent, we, we're hoping that the, the number of learners uh, in private provision will assist us in reviewing the target in this regard. Uh, the total number of fully registered ECD sites is transferred. We have set a target of 1,300. We are currently undertaking a registration process uh, and we may reposition this target in the adjustment process. <clears throat> the number of learners in registered ECD sites is 69,000 currently. We've set a target of 70,000. Uh, this, this is simply to stabilize uh, the, the, the transfer from social development. And once we have that, we will then look at how, how we expand. Uh, on infrastructure, uh, there is um, 2.4 billion. It's an increase from uh, last year, um, and I think to, to a large extent, um, it, it incorporates uh, an additional allocation of 500 million rands <clears throat> that has been earmarked for a special province-specific allocation from Treasury uh, to build 18 schools over the next three years uh, using a budget of 1.5 billion allocated by Treasury. Uh, this, this is separate from the normal delivery that has been undertaken by the Provincial Public Works, um, and we are already on track to deliver those 18 in addition to 17 that will be delivered uh, by, by the Provincial Public Works. Um, I think to a large extent, we'll also focus on 165 million on special schools uh, and 29 million on ECD uh, development. We're looking at, at developing a flagship uh, a community center that, that will look at an integrated approach to child development uh, in, in the community and to use that as a concept for expanding uh, access to, to specialized services uh, across the province. 
Chair, a lot of the uh, uh, indicators have got not applicable, and that is uh, simply that uh, there are no public schools that do not have access to adequate water, uh, electricity, and sanitation in Gauteng. Uh, there are schools that don't have bulk services in Gauteng uh, due to municipalities not extending the bulk services to those schools, but there is alternate provision in those schools that meets the requirements of the norms and standards for school infrastructure. Uh, these were audited by the Auditor General and in terms of the technical indicator descriptor, uh, it, it, it says that once it's been audited and found to be uh, compliant, uh, then you can declare it is no longer applicable. Uh, I think this has also been double checked by the Department of Basic Education and they, they also confirm uh, this claim. The number of schools where scheduled maintenance projects uh, are to be undertaken, we're setting a target of 400. And then the number of classrooms to be refurbished as smart classrooms, these are classrooms that will be e ready for a rollout of, of uh, uh, electronic boards uh, and, and uh, teacher laptops and support materials is 350. In terms of examination, um, I think the, the, there is also a portion of payment to the uh, ETDB CETA of 125 million for teacher development uh, as, as per the Skills Development uh, Act and levy provision. Uh, and then professional services is 430, special projects is 1.5, uh, external examinations is 559, uh, and in total the budget is 2. Uh, Seven, nine. Uh, I think the special projects of 1.5 billion uh, includes all the youth development programs uh, in the province as well. The targets that we've set here is that the metric performance, we are setting a target of 87.2% uh, an improvement of at least uh, two and a half percent. Uh, we are hoping to at least 44% uh, bachelor rate. Uh, we want to get at least 17.5% of learners achieving 60% in, in mathematics uh, and at least get 21.5% of learners uh, writing physical science to achieve 60%. Uh, the number of secondary schools to, to par with a pass rate of 60% and above, uh, we, we've reached 881. Uh, I think we, we have got less than uh, 25 schools in the province uh, that fluctuate between above 60% and below 60%. Uh, and we are working with those schools as part of the underperforming program. Uh, in terms of the youth development aspects, so we are hoping to target 10,000 uh, school learners in terms of career guidance and, and gui uh, uh, information sharing. Um, and then youth instructed skills development program, we're looking at 3,000. And then youth benefiting from workplace experience, we are setting a target of 2030. And the number of bursary allocations uh, to youth will be a 1,000. Um, that will be a 1,000 new uh, overall uh, to, to the existing target that we already have. Um, I think we, we, we remain under uh, tight budget pressures. Uh, expanding pre-grade R services in poor community will require additional funding over time. Uh, we need to address the growth in learner numbers and the shortage of learning spaces. This is leading to overcrowding in some high pressure areas. Uh, and in infrastructure funding in respect of maintenance and major rehabilitation need to increase over time. Chair and the MEC, I think I'd like to hand back. Thank you. Uh, thank you, TDG. Uh, thanks, Chair. That is the outing presentation.
Uh, chair? Um, I think I got cut. Um, can I maybe kindly request Honorable Ndongeni to take over in the meantime? Thank you, Tando. Good afternoon, members. Good afternoon. MECs from provinces. For the time being, thank you for the presentation for the three provinces. But as from the chair says, we're going to engage with two provinces. If I'm wrong, then you're going to correct me. So, members, this is the time for engagement with the presentations. So I'm going to start just because I've got that privilege of to be a chairperson. I'm sorry for that. Okay, let me go to Eastern Cape. Eastern Cape, are you there? On page eight of the EC, hello? Yes, you are audible, Honorable Ndongeni. Oh, thank you. I thought I'm alone. My question is on page eight of the EC policy and budget speech 2023-24 notes, the department will continue to ensure the provision of the appropriate package of support to viable secondary schools in quantile one to three. Can you please elaborate on successes and challenges linked to the provision of the appropriate package of support? The second one, elaborate on how the viable of a school is established to be a recipient of the appropriate package of support. Still on page eight of the EC policy and budget speech 2023-24 notes, the process of rationalization of schools is, com is complex. Therefore, the rationalization process will be informed by a provision, provincial education plan based on needs assessment and emerging trends, infrastructure revitalization and development will be aligned to the rationalization process. Page six of the EC annual performance plan 2020-2024 notes, the department will continue to develop a plan for the national, for rationalization of the school in the province. I'm sorry about that. The rationalization process aims to improve opportunities for learners by placing them in schools that are equipped to provide quality education. Second school landscape plans have been put in place to ensure that the rationalization process is implemented orderly to make sure that learners have access to quality education within school in the same circuit. In 2020-2024, the department is planning to rationalize 259 schools. Can you please elaborate on the mentioned provincial education plan and the infrastructure revitalization and development as aligned within the rationalization process? Still on page eight, still on page eight of the EC policy and budget speeches 2020-2024 notes, key amongst the prioritization drive was to accelerate the eradication of pit look pit toilets, beautification of the schools, and fencing of various schools in the province in 2023-24 financial year. A substantial po portion of the infrastructure budget for 2023-24 budget is reprioritized to address sanitation backlogs. Can you please elaborate on the above along with the emphasis on eradication and safe pit latrine in all schools in the province. On slide nine of the Eastern Cape presentation notes, condition grant funding reflects on positive increase of 7.1% from the revised estimated in 2022-23, largely due to poor performance on infrastructure development during the period of reporting for December 2022. Please elaborate on the strategy to be used to overcome poor performance of infrastructure delivery. The last one, 
On slide 39 of the Eastern Cape presentation notes, training of fundamental of district performance will be conducted to empower district officials of the self-assessment process, analysis of qualitative data emanating from the self-assessment and the develop on the district development plan. This will be done to improve district functional monitoring of schools will be strengthened to improve functionality, to improve governance, SCP will also be trained. Please elaborate on the quantity and qualification training type to be employed to this intended development. And please share if there are any relationship with the higher education to produce publishable in the research focus on the desired outcome from the training district official and SGPs. Let me go to Free State. I'm a chair for the time being. The chair will go to take. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm thank back. you, chair. But yeah. let me answer these two questions for free state. Slide nine of presentation of the free state budget, 2023-24 notes, the department is not in a position to find its soft software fully. Slide two of the presentation of 2023-24 APP notes, output indicator 104, number of smart schools provided with additional ICT devices and output indicator 105 number of teaching provided with ICT devices. Slide three notes, output indicators 106 number of office-based educators provided with ICT device lights. For notes, output indicator 201 number of schools provide with multimedia resources. <clears throat> and then noting that the department is not a position to fund software fully. Is software funded alongside the ICT devices and multimedia resources provided to the school? The last one. Page 63 of the Free State APP states, our schools are piloting the teaching of coding and robotic in the fun foundation, intermediate and senior phase. And the department is gradually increasing the number of schools offering the te technical and occupational stream in fostering the attainment of, school, of skills for a ch changing world. The focus of our training will target teachers as a strategy to ensure successful and smooth implementation, as well as prepare learners for the much needed technical schools for changing their livelihoods. How is the software funded and needed to successfully deliver the coding and robotic curriculum across spaces? Thanks, Chairperson. You can take it now. No, thanks, uh, Honorable Mundane, and thanks, uh, members. Um, I got cut off out of the meeting, but I also want to just check some few things um, with the two provinces. Um, one is the challenges with the second chance metric program. Um, in most cases, students will say that no, the once you fail metric, second chance, uh, some schools do not allow that. They say you are over age and over the other, you know. Um, what are the challenges with it? And um, what kind of solutions, you know, um, did you introduce? And then what is the progress? Um, and also the performance of the students, the second chances, you know. Um, and then the other pro the thing with me, the early child with the ECD migration. Um, so the with the with the with the ECD migration from social development to education to basic education, what I'm talking about. Um, because you know the ECD some years ago, before this, before they were transferred here, in my village, children will just be taken to school to go and play. 
and and uh, you know playing with tires and things like that. And there was really little uh, training in terms of I mean education and all that. Now when this children are integrated, what are the challenges, what are the gaps, especially um, matters related to systems and processes? Uh, what were the challenges? And if you are, as a province, asked to design this thing, um, the integration, what are the things that you would introduce or things that you think are not working for you or, or are a hindrance? Um, because you know we are dealing with the with the youngest members of our society, you know, um, what we refer to as future as future as future citizens, you know, um, their education is very important because the these are the people who will be running the country when we are gone. Um, now I just want to check again with the with the underperforming schools. I know there are provinces where there are non-performing schools. Underperforming is something else. Non-performing schools is schools where everybody will fail metric. This year, second year, and you find that they've been, there was just no pass from that school in, in the last two or three years. I know of such schools in Limpopo. Um, now, what is this that the provinces are doing, for instance, the department in the provinces to at least to move non-performing schools to performing or at least somehow underperforming? Because when you underperform, it means you are doing something. It's just that you might be having challenges and difficulties. But if you are not performing, then what is the use of that school? What value does the school add to our, to the community? And what are those programs that we have been in, in place to, to turn such schools around? Um, no, my other questions will be for how we when we meet with them next time. It will be because we, we had a, a visit to Gauteng during that time, not only Gauteng, including other provinces that were affected by the, by the uprisings of July. Um, schools that were burned down, others were, uh, there was looting, breaking down of schools. And yeah, so just getting progress on what has happened to those schools now, what is, uh, and, 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 and how did those schools perform in the last uh, um, uh, uh, financial year? Um, if there are other questions, members, um, I'm looking at a show of hands and, and then in the absence of and lots of our members are thrown out of the meeting. Uh, um, thing, I mean, um, Free State, Eastern Cape, you may take the questions uh, as, as asked by the members. And these members who, with the, with the how it in questions, um, we can sure. send the, the questions to Noel Tando in writing, and these questions will be sent to the department so that when they come to present, it could be maybe to, uh, some few people coming to present the the answers to those questions when we meet with the national department. Uh, over to you. I'll start with the Eastern Cape. I'm sorry, and to other, and sorry if there to other that. questions that members would like to add, I'm looking at. Oh, yeah, and Tate Baha. Can see Honorable Baha's hand. Um, thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. And Chair, let me welcome the presentations by the uh, different provincial uh, departments. Um, Chair, I just have, um, I think, three, three questions that I want to 
that I want to raise. Um, firstly, the, the, the Eastern Cape, in terms of the budget speech 2023-24 notes, for 2023-24, the Eastern Cape is piloting a, a coding and robotics curriculum in 136 schools, made up of 25 schools in grades R, grades, uh, R to grade three, and 111 schools um, offering grade seven. Um, can you kindly share the successes and challenges linked uh, to the above? Um, the second one, Chairperson, is on the ECD practitioners qualification. Can you elaborate on the training and development of ECDs, uh, ECD practitioners in terms of service providers and quality, quality control? And then on the, in the free state presentation, the intervention programs directed at improving learner attainment in the NSC are implemented in line with the provincial strategy on learner attainment um, consequ consequently, the interventions programs um, cater to all learners um, to achieve NSC. Is there any inclusion of guidance to pursue a TVET qualification requiring a grade nine as an entry requirement? Thank you, Chairperson. That's all that I wanted to get. Yeah, thanks, Honorable Bacha. Um, let me check if I'm still. Uh... Yeah, uh, thanks, Honorable Bacha. Um, are there further questions from members? If there's none, can I give over to the uh, the, the, the two provinces to respond to the questions? Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, this is Garda from the Eastern Cape. Uh, can we be the start? Can we start, Chair? Yes, welcome. Yes. Chair, allow me to bring uh, to, your, to your platform a DDG for school administration and also DDG for curriculum management. Um, both of them, they are going to respond to the questions. Uh, let's start with the DDG Mchida. Through you, Chair. Uh, <clears throat> thank you so much, Honorable MEC, Honorable Chairperson of the Select Committee, and to all the honorable members and colleagues in the meeting. Uh, Chair, I will be dealing with some few infrastructure related. Uh, uh, comments and questions that were raised by the honorable members and also touch on rationalization, but also the training of districts is one of the areas that I'm going to be touching on. So I think that the main question on infrastructure arises out of the return of 100 million rand, a, a, a situation that was experienced in the Eastern Cape in the previous financial year, which ended, of course, some two weeks and of much ago. We, 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 we have done a, a, a lot in terms of ensuring that as we begin this new financial year, because one of the areas of weakness that we had identified was around the question of planning of projects, because we realized that our planning and the implement, implementation uh, period, there was a problem where, for instance, we would only be starting with the planning and finalization of procurement of service providers who must actually do the rollout of programs. We realized that in the previous years, we had been starting to do the procurement process right at the beginning of the year. Yet at the beginning of the year, we are actually expected and supposed to be starting the actual uh, implementation. So in so far as that area is concerned, I, I, we, we believe that we have done so much so that most of the projects that are planned for the new financial year are already being 
rolled out as we are actually speaking. But we also have established a monitoring structure in the department at the highest level of the department, where on a monthly basis, the implementing agents, which for the, uh, I mean, in the Eastern Cape, we have six implementing agents that actually have a responsibility of rolling out infrastructure, that those implementing agents, the PSU that has been a, 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 a commissioned by the department and the city management meet on a monthly basis to receive the reports on, on the issues and the challenges that the implementing agents are actually experiencing on the ground. One of the areas that we have also in, introduced in the, as part of the system is what we call the, 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 the tranche payments. Because one of the reasons that had been problematic in the area of infrastructure rollout was the fact that we were very much slow in terms of paying the contractors because our implementing agents would actually run out of money because of slow payment by the department. So what we have actually introduced now is what we call charge payments, where we pay implementing in advance, of course, using the relevant sections of the public uh, 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 finance management act so, so, so that there is a continuous flow of funds between the department and the implementing agents and in turn between the implementing agents and the contractors. And by so doing, we, 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 we really want to, 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 to believe that there is not going to be a delay now, firstly, in terms of the, 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 the rollout of projects and, 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 and followed, of course, by the the payment that must actually go to the contractor so as not to disrupt the construction of projects. But also linked to, 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 to it is rationalization of our schools. A rationalization of, of, of schools as a project and its nature is dependent on first provision of sufficient infrastructure. Because if you are moving learners from one place to another place, it should be that you are you make sure that to the schools where you are taking the learners that you have adequate infrastructure. But the second a, a, a dependent the, the, the dependency is of course the provision of scholar transport because in some cases or in many of the cases you you, you find out that in order for the schools to move or to learners to move from a school which is unviable to the school that is deemed to be viable, they travel uh, or they walk long distances, which requires a, a scholar transport. With the fact that scholar transport at this present moment is a shared function between the Department of Education and the Department of Transport. Sometimes there are delays in the alignment of planning between the Department of Transport and the de Department of, 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 of Education, which causes us to move a little bit slowly until there is confirmation by both departments that transport will be made available at a time that a, a, a scholar transport must be provided, provided, but also the provision of adequate infrastructure because it's either it is in the form of hostel or it is in the form of additional classrooms. So those are the dependencies on which they, they, they want to call the, 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 the smooth roll out of, 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 of in Africa, scholar transport uh, depends. But we are working together with the Department of Transport to ensure that the plans, our plans are actually uh, uh, aligned. Then, and that also speaks to the package of support that we are providing to, 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 to the schools that must be rationalized. It's either it's in the form of of provision of hostels or of scholar transport uh, or of additional classrooms. So those are the areas where you always need to, to, to ensure that your plans talk to each uh, other. Then in order to improve uh, district performance, apart from the other capacity building programs of training your subject advisors, of training your 
your, your, your circuit manager. There is a standardized training and program by, by, by Department of Basic Education, which is called the Fundamentals for District Performance. That ensures that there is uniform and standardized training for districts in order to ensure that districts indeed function at a level which is actually desired. And that one is actually driven by, 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 by DBE. So we roll out that program even in, in, in the Eastern Cape. But apart from that, as I indicate, through our teacher development uh, initiatives, there are programs which are meant to build the capacity of newly appointed uh, uh, circuit managers, a program for continuous uh, uh, capacity building for our subject uh, advisors, because a district and its functioning is actually dependent on, on, on the functioning uh, circuit managers or EDOs in some provinces, and also the, fun the, the functioning of, 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 of circuit managers. And not unless then I am reminded of any other question that I may not have attended to, I thought that those were mainly the areas where we were uh, uh, asked to respond. Thank you so much, Honorable MC. Thank you so much, Honorable Chair. <clears throat> Can you chat to you? Can we can we present TTG uh, uh, on the matters relating to curriculum? Yes, you may. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, honourable chair. Uh, thank you, honourable members. Uh, thank you, honourable MSC. Uh, just some couple of questions that relate to curriculum uh, management in the department. The the first one was on the second chance metric chair. Uh, in the case of Eastern Cape we are not encouraging children to repeat when they have uh, passed um, subjects and they are few that they fall short of. We are encouraging them to take the two chances of writing in June and write again in December. But what we have done in the Eastern Cape in collaboration with DBE, we have created schools of support for children who are undergoing the second chance metric program. So in each of our districts, we have allocated a number of these centers where we support them to prepare them to write in June uh, to write again in December. So we've been trying by all means um, to alleviate the workload from schools to take back children who did not get a bachelor or a senior certificate from going back to school full time. But we rather encourage them to rewrite uh, on two occasions subjects that they want to uplift, then that allows them to consolidate uh, their results instead of sending them back to school uh, to redo the whole package of metric subjects we are into this program. So this is a very big program, Chair, uh, because we've tried by all means to make sure children who also have subjects that they never completed in metric to come back and, and complete them. And it's a program that is driven by the minister's office at DPE and we support it fully as Eastern Cape Department of Education. Chair, the second one was on ECD migration. As a province, we've done it successfully, uh, particularly you know, managing the transfer of functions uh, between the two departments, uh, but also looking at some residue functions that we co-manage between ourselves and the Department of Social Development. Uh, as we speak now, we are managing the issue of setting up our information management systems uh, based on the fact that nationally, we are trying to reconstruct a single information management system for the whole of ECD because it changes the picture altogether, Chair. Uh, ECD is, is now zero to nine. And if it's from zero to nine, it has all to be provided for under the, you know, the roof of Department of Education. So all elements that relate to you know, the planning uh, the management and the deliver of ECT services. That's what we're working. We're working with the, uh, with TBE on all of those policies. I should think we we have done and we're done with legal and policy dimensions. Coming to training chair of ECT practitioners is a specific question uh, that has come out in terms of training of ECT practitioners. We are using universities for credit bearing qualifications, and in this case we have universities that we collaborate with in the Eastern Cape to provide training, especially for level six. 
Uh, in the past, we used to have a lot of NGOs that were participating uh, in, 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 in training and development, but many of them were not necessarily credit bearing in the formal sense of the NQF, but they were courses that gave qualifications within the ECD accreditation system. So we tried to manage the transition between level fours of ECD practitioner qualification into the NQF level five and six qualification. Once they are at NQF level six qualification, then they qualify to be uh, practitioners that can be absorbed as teachers in terms of RPQ requirements of the qualifications framework of South Africa. So uh, the, the answer to the question is that we are using universities to do the credit bearing uh, dimension of our qualification for our ECT practitioners. Uh, Chair, coding and robotics, uh, correctly as numbers were stated in terms of the number of schools uh, that are piloting. Chair, when you pilot, there are certain dimensions of the pilot that you want to manage you know, quite carefully because they must tell you a story about how you are going to succeed or whether you will succeed in upscaling to the whole system. I should think the first one is the suitability of the policy framework for coding and robotics. And this we do in collaboration with DBE because they are the managers of policy and particularly encapsulating the outcomes through the CAPS curriculum. We've done that successfully. And I should think it's one of our major challenges uh, in terms of, of, the, of the pilot. The second part, Chair, that's a bit tricky is availability of LTSM. Currently, there's one publisher that has come forward in the Eastern Cape to talk about available you know, um, material that is in line with CAPS on coding and robotics, uh, which is what we're busy dealing with in terms of sharing resources uh, with these publishers. Uh, it's only one so far that has come forward. But to the rest, you'll find that training providers also, they do provide uh, some manuals, they do provide some scripted lessons, you know, on how teachers should, you know, conduct coding and robotic classes. But in our case, we've decided to go back to the syllabus or what we might call uh, the annual teaching plans for coding and robotics and look at the alignment with the resources that we have, which is the textbooks that are available. And that's an area that was almost providing a big challenge. And the third area is teacher development and teacher training in coding and robotics. And what we've done is to look at teachers in primary schools that we train um, to provide for coding and robotics. Currently, there's no qualification in South Africa that produces a teacher called qualified in coding and robotics. But we look at technology uh, qualified teachers whom we have trained over the past five years, and we draw in components of coding and robotics syllabus that we infuse into that training. So it's, it's, it's almost like you know, an area of challenge, but we, we've been able to prepare teachers that are participating in the, in the pilot so that they pilot successfully uh, in terms of that. Then the third one, Chair, is monitoring of actual delivery, which is classroom teaching and learning. And this is the case that we've built into the monitoring and evaluation framework of our subject advisors. Uh, just to make sure that there is a way in which we are able to evaluate effectiveness uh, in the classroom. So that goes um, hand in hand with the assessment frameworks that were put in place so that make sure that um, coding and robotics is assessed and taught well in schools. So these are almost the three dimensions that we were looking at. Uh, the last one is the funding framework and the funding scope that will arise from this. And we looking at comparison with other technical subjects, technical, vocational, there won't be anything that is outside the scope. So we have looked at funding from that perspective and we find alignment. So it's not going to be an, an, an out of space kind of funding requirements um, for, for coding and robotics. So that's almost uh, like your successes and challenges uh, around the pilot. Um, probably take into account uh, the fact that um, it's, it's a very small number of schools in terms of pilot. And uh, we were looking at a representation of the pilot so that it's, it's scaled to all types of schools. It's representative of all types of schools. And we also 
take into account that the implications for scaling. So these are the sort of lessons that we are trying to draw uh, from the process. We, we draw lessons as we implement and we, we write up reports as we go into the implementation process. Uh, Chair, those are the main issues that relate to curriculum requirements for this presentation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, th uh, thank you, Chair. We, we can hand it back to you. Chair, as Eastern Cape, we've handed it back to you. Afternoon again. I'm sure, Chair, I've got a problem of in network, it's on and off. Everybody is crying. But thank you, Eastern Cape. But I'm not quite sure whether I hear about the infrastructure and pit latrines. I'm not quite sure, but I'm sorry if at all you have answered on that. Let's go to Free State. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair and members. Uh, this is Lady Ben again, the 18th CFO. I'll be assisted by Mr. Jacobs on, on a few questions. The very first question on the issue of slide nine versus the, the, uh, the APP or uh, non-financial. In terms of slide nine, where we speak about our funding in terms of software, that does not affect schools because it's, it's specifically software for corporate buildings. Uh, when it comes to schools, they are, they are properly catered for. And the smart schools that are indicated on the APP, those are the five schools that the department is running where we run the, we, we provide those learners with uh, uh, smart classes in the sense of not using textbooks, but uh, IT. So those are covered. That is why they are part of the amount of money that was shown on the budget uh, with, with regards to uh, uh, EMAP funding. So those were funded through the EMA funding. So those are two different uh, 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 areas, but corporate is the one that has a challenge. On the issue of coding and robotics, chair, um, we fund this program through the MST grant, and Med Science and Technology grant, and that is specifically for the learners. But when it comes to the educators for, for training purposes, our skills lady provides for the educators. So the, two areas, the educators are trained through a, a skills levy while the learners are, are assisted or uh, <clears throat> provided with information through the math, science and technology conditional grant. On the challenges of uh, second, uh, Mr. Jacobs will respond to that one of, of, of challenges of second chance metric program. Coming to the question of how we how, uh, were the children integrated the ECD portion. Jefferson, uh, the, the function, when it came through the department, which was integrated in the existing programs of the department, the chairperson will remember that in terms of what education is providing, within primary school, like the program from five, we do have uh, centers that were already in, in existence, and we also had ECD at schools. However, these ones that came from DSD were not necessarily uh, integrated into schools. They are still functioning as they used to function. So funding is provided at that area. Each, 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 each uh, center receives its, its funding uh, through the normal transfers that we do. But the challenge that we experienced when the function came over was their record system, how they were recording uh, the, their numbers, the learners, uh, even the, the, the centers themselves. But what we did to overcome that, uh, education uses the education management information system, which is IMIS. We had to make sure that all those uh, centers, as they come from uh, DSD, 
they are incorporated into EMIS in terms of the learners, in terms of the centers, because when we transfer money to schools, equally so for these centers, we need to, we rely on EMIS for the numbers. So that's how we, we managed to inter integrate them into our education management uh, uh, system uh, uh, chair. Uh, in terms of our underperforming schools program, the department on an annual basis, maybe we must start at the, the PSLA, the provincial uh, strategy on learner attainment. That's our key uh, area. We, after the results are out, then there are analysis of the results that took place around March or earlier than that. Uh, from there, we, can, we, we are able to determine the schools that are underperforming and which grades, because we, we include all the grades when we do the analysis of the results, not only grade 12. Then we, the, our first point will be the, our grade 12s, but we also include other grades like grade eight and, and nine, because the intention is to make sure that when they get to grade 12, is we, we limit the, the number of intention, interventions that we do. So we, we provide schools with additional support uh, through our spring classes, winter classes, as well as our autumn classes on an annual basis. But over and above that, uh, learners are also encouraged to attend Saturday classes where possible. But in the free state, uh, Chairperson, if you walk around to see on Saturdays, uh, there's, there's, there's a big number of learners that are always carrying books going to schools. Those are the classes that are assisting the province in terms of performance through those centers that are going uh, to those classes. But it's, it doesn't end all, only with the department uh, doing that part. Schools themselves, because amongst themselves, they, they, they see how others are performing and uh, uh, they learn from others. Schools are also encouraging their own educators as well as learners to come to Saturday classes. So those are the things that we do uh, to assist them. It doesn't end only end at that, at that, at that uh, uh, the department, the schools also are, are playing a part. So Chairperson, I think in terms of all the questions that we, we are supposed to, let me go back to, sorry Chair, I missed the part of, of um, the integration. There's a part of training of, of, of practitioners that I missed to explain. The Free State Department of Education has a, a, a partnership with the University of Northwest through Project Stroom Campus, where we take our practitioners on an annual basis to train and to make sure that we are great our qualifications. So that we move to a point where they are moving from being uh, uh, under, under qualified or unqualified to a point that where they are fully qualified. So that at a time when they need to be appointed at the post level one as educators, then that is done. So we, we work with the University of uh, Northwest through projects from uh, uh, campus. That person, thank you very much. If you allow us, I'll ask Dr. Jacobs to add, there are two questions that he wanted to explain further. Even though from where I explained, he can also come in. Thank you very much, Dr. Jacobs. Yes, thanks. Thank you. Oh, Shay, you are back. Yes, I'm back, yeah. Okay, thank you. We, we're running out of thank time. You. Is there any other... Um, Thank you, Chair. Every state I meant to say. Thank you, Chair. I needed to add on the answers for the free state. Oh, on the second chance metric program, the finishing schools in terms of performance, I just want to reflect on the figures to show how learners in those uh, centers are uh, performing. Per district. In Fesley Derby last year, we had an enrollment of 524 who set for the exam. And 466 learners passed, giving us an 88,9% pass in that district. And then in Lijoliputwa, the enrollment was 2459. 1756 learners passed, giving us a 71,4% pass rate. In Mangaung, the enrollment was 2,580 learners. 2,095 passed, giving us an 81,2% pass rate. In Tabumo Futsanyana, with the highest enrollment, 3,276 learners, and um, 2,725 passed, giving us an 83,2% pass rate. The last district, Karip, we had 908 enrollment, 
646 learners passed, giving us a percentage of 71,1%. Overall, the percentage pass was 78,9%. So the performance of learners in the second chance metric program, the finishing schools is, is quite encouraging looking at these figures. Thank you, Chair. On the CD, just to add, the migration happened quite successfully. In terms of progress, there's training that focuses on grade R with a focus on the curriculum assessment policy statement. Pre-grade R are receiving great training on the national curriculum framework. Then we've got second component of reskilling. At grade R level, the reskilling is working towards attainment of a diploma. And pre-grade R, the reskilling is working towards attainment of NQF level four at least. And in terms of a highlight, is that from these practitioners, 450 of them have been absorbed on personal as post level one educators because they meet the requirements in terms of qualifying as an educator. The biggest challenge that we're working on is data, data. So we are working now on a database through our MS so that we have all the information that we need for, for ECD. So that's the addition I wanted to make on ECD. And the last one on interventions of grade 12. Guidance is one of the curriculum offerings. So learners do receive guidance in terms of possible career paths, whether at the, at the, at the, at the end of grade nine or up to end of grade 12. But what is important is that the three stream model is going to assist the system in the medium to long term in terms of different career paths so that our learners do not only look at university as the only option after metric. Of course, this is gonna require a paradigm shift at the level of society as a whole in terms of creating a balance between vocational and academic education. The benchmark in terms of what's an underperforming school at a national level is placed at 65%. And in the free state, we have raised that to say, if you achieve less than 75%, we categorize you as an underperforming school so that we can push on our schools to perform in, in, in 80s and the upper 80s up to 100%. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Okay. okay, let me take over the meeting. Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you, MEC, for Eastern Cape and the staff and teachers and teachers, even the Free State MEC. DDG and to the staff. We thank you for your presentation and you avail yourself in a busy schedule, but you try to come to us. Thank you very much. DG, oh. Mr. Demuel, are you still here? I'm back in the meeting now. Oh, okay. You can take it over because I was about to close the meeting. Yeah, we actually ran. Is the DJ in the meeting? If the if if it's not, he's not in the meeting. Okay. I doubt it's not. Uh... That will write them the questions and will send them the questions. They've, they've actually had some of the questions that are 
pertinent to you know uh, to us and that uh, will add other questions that will be directly linked connected to their presentation um in those ways thank you very much this meeting is agent nomfundo uh, nomfundo noltando is noltando still in the meeting yes chair i'm here yeah we have um, minutes with so, yes, sorry, chair. So, sorry, chair. Just to come in, uh, I, I was struggling to unmute. That's Pat Kuno on behalf of the DG. I was struggling to oh, yeah. unmute, chair. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, we, we want to, to, to thank the. I'm trying to show my, my, my face. So, sorry about that. Can you see my face, chair? <laughs> So <laughs> not yeah. really, but yeah, the question is yeah, no, the yeah, no, no, no. Thank you so much to the chair. No, uh, we to do the, yeah. to you, chair, as well as uh, the, the 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 committee members for the reception you gave us, and we also want to well, thank the, the the three uh, provinces, and then we will continue to give support, chair, to to the provinces wherever there's a need. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you to the committee. Bye, Danke. Um, this meeting is urgent. Any any additions, any comments, any corrections? In the absence of any, is there any move for adoption of this minutes? I move for the adoption of the minutes as true reflection. Thank you very much. Thanks, Honorable Mungosi. Any second? Baha, seconds, Chair. Honorable Baha, thank you very much. Um, is there another set of minutes? No, sir. Lo no. Okay, thank, thanks a lot. Um, all the members, this meeting is agent. Those who have questions for how they can write them down. We can either give them those questions later and or invite them to our meeting when we meet with the uh, National Department. Bye, Danke. Have a good day. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chair. Mm. Mm?